Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, who needs a pep talk? I think we all do, right? Okay, so when we talk about pep talks, what is the intention of doing a pep talk? It is to create a new energetic place or being that we weren't in previously. Usually it represents that we're feeling low, our vibration is down, we're not feeling energized, productive, or we can't concentrate, we may be fatigued, and we want to get ourselves out of that place into a more vibrant, positive, loving, emotive state, okay? So that's what a pep talk is about. So when we give ourselves a pep talk, what we've got to do is work out why we've got that first emotive state that we're in. Emotions run this, okay? I've always said depression is based on the past and it's when we're hanging on to emotions from our past. Anxiety is based on future events where we try to control those events occurring and we're trying to make the outcome the way that we want it to be, okay? So it all relates to emotions. So when we want to get ourselves out of a rut or to give ourselves a pep talk, first thing we have to do is calm down. You may want to meditate for a few minutes. You may want to go into your heart chakra and just be. So how do we do that firstly? Because there's one, two, three, four, five steps I've written down. So this is step one if you want to take notes. Don't pay for a course on how to do this because I give you all the information for free, right? Because that's what I love to do. Okay, so the first one, if you are writing these down today, write down, stay calm. It may be meditate, it may be go and have a shower, it may be go for a walk and admire the scenery that you see, it may be watching your favourite show and then just relaxing afterwards. But the big thing that we want to do here is to clear our mind because when we don't think, I've got to do the washing, I've got to take the kids to school, I've got to do band practice, I've got to do grocery shopping, I've got to go here, I've got to go to work, I've got to cook this, oh God, that person's coming over later. You've got to take all those thoughts out of your head and don't think. So we stay calm. Now, one of my techniques in how to do that, I say count to 10, but leave 10 seconds between each number. So you go one, count to 10 seconds, two, count to 10 seconds, three, because that will be about a minute then, um, 10 with 10 seconds between, that's 50 seconds, right? Nearly a minute. And what you're doing there is you can't think because your brain is concentrating on that next number in the sequence. And also what it's doing is allowing us to calm down and we're present in our own being. So that's a good one, okay? If you'd want techniques here on how to calm down, okay? Stay present. So you may even want to count the, the noises around you. It might be a ticking clock. You can hear a bird singing, you can hear someone down the road mowing their yard, you may hear traffic noises, you may hear neighbours screaming or whatever. So you count the numbers up, all those noises, so you're aware of where we are in the present. But then we've got to take emotions out of the equation. So don't get angry at the neighbours getting upset. Don't sit there and think about all the love vibrations for that bird doing its beautiful, happy song. We've got to take the emotions out of it, guys, and just connect with who we are and stay calm. The second one on the list is to identify why we're in this rut. It's a doozy. Old guy there. It's a doozy. So we've got to think now what or who has caused us to be in this rut where we need our pep talk. I was talking to a lovely friend on the phone 
and she has personally got an issue with a relative so I'll go there because who doesn't have an issue with a relative okay so you visualize that relative in front of yourself okay you visualize them and you think now without putting emotion into it think about what they're doing that's affecting you so much this is what's called the mirror effect what are they doing externally to us where we are attaching to that energy which is our emotion and it's causing us to feel so down okay so if you've got a relative who's opinionated or they want you to do something that you don't really want to do you call that behavior out and you identify it so the third one is call out the behavior that you are now emitting as a consequence of what they were doing okay so if you've got an let's just say you've got a relative and they're very opinionated they might be telling you to do something that you don't want to do so now you're calling out how we are reacting to what they want okay how does it make you feel what's that emotion that you're feeling when they want you to do something okay now this is just an example okay so then what we do is we do like what I had to do in my life review when I died and went to heaven we see it from their perspective go into their shoes and you look at it from their eyes with now with like Linda external and you say to yourself right I'm going to become that relative I'm going to try and understand why they're pressuring me to do this thing or why they're doing that behavior that they're doing that is now affecting me so much where I'm getting so emotional about it okay so you put yourself into their perspective and then you can understand where they're coming from okay you can understand then why they're doing what they're doing and if you go and want to go really deep you can talk about to yourself whether they might have any past issues past grudges past traumas that may be affecting why they're behaving like they are now but don't blame don't accuse and most of all love them for who they are now okay without judgment or accusation because through this transformation that we then get we can do what's called healing we can heal the emotions that are now coming from an external force that are trying to zap into us making us feel so you think right this is now their issue this is now their problems to deal with this is now something for them to address within themselves if they want to and thou through that separation where you identify yourself as here and they're over there and you say no more I no more allow their energy to make me feel like this it's not my problem some people use the term not my monkey not my circus okay I love that one not my monkey not my circus go and deal with it yourself because it's up to them to psychoanalyze themselves under their own free will whether they want to actually heal all those behaviors that are now inflicting us as well okay so we can heal ourselves and the last point forgiveness this is where peace comes in because if we google what does peace mean ultimately it means where you hold no side like a war we don't have to hold sides that side against that side 
We don't accuse, we don't judge. We allow people to do what they're doing. Letting them have our free advice, which I give all the time, today is free advice, right? We can give them our free advice. We can show them, man, are you aware that you're doing this behavior and it's making all these other people feel book? They may not even know that they're doing it. So of course, if you want to be that supportive relative or supportive friend trying to help somebody, of course we can do that, okay? But at the end of the day, we cannot let their emotions affect who we are because this is how we take our power. This is how we get self-embodiment. This is how we get our own self-authority. When we say, Linda, Linda, right now, <clears throat> she wants to be happy. Linda is going to have a great day today. Linda is going to sleep so good tonight. <clears throat> Bear with me because I talk all day, don't I? Linda does not want their dramas, their issues, their emotions because that's all what drama and situations are, right? It's all emotion through that energy. So we say no more. I love you. I can support you. I can help you out as much as I can. But I'm no longer going to allow or give you permission to attach to me energetically. Look how many people... Um, get affected by what they hear on the news, by the governments, what they hear from their neighbours, their friends, their co-workers or even their family or their partners and their immediate families. We all do it. So how do we stop it? We don't get involved in that emotion. Look how many drama queens are out there. Drama queens love creating drama where they need because need's a bad word, right? It's negative when we need something. We want something. That's the difference. Wanting something is totally positive. So drama queens need that support network around them where they can, oh my God, I need you here right now. The washing machine just blew up. Or they ring you and say, oh my God, you wouldn't believe what happened to me at work. They're creating all that drama inflicting us with it all making us on that same vibrational plane so we say no more we flick it out you can still talk to me about your dramas but from now on I'm going to address those issues in a positive way and if you can't deal with that that's your problem okay I used to know a drama queen Every day she'd ring me. Oh, Linda, the car won't start. Can you come and take the kids to school? Oh, my God, Linda, I've got to go to court because I've got a speeding ticket. Linda, I, oh, my God, I haven't got enough money to buy my groceries. Can I please borrow some money? Oh, Linda, oh, my God, I'm going out tomorrow night. I don't have a dress to wear. See how she, is, she was, because was, she's no longer my friend, right? But every day she brought me in to her emotive state of being. So when we say no more and we say, you know what? I love you. I love you as a friend or a family or a co-worker or a neighbor or whoever they are, government. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to allow your energy to affect who I am now. That's how we get stressed. That's how we start getting depressed where you want to go out and gamble and you want to smoke cigarettes and you want to go and drink all night to get through that pain of what other people are doing to us. Okay? And as soon as you work this out and you say to yourself, man, I've had this within me all my life where I simply had to stand up and look at myself in the mirror and say, Linda, because I'm going to use me now, right? I'm going to use me now. Look at me in the mirror and you say, Linda, that friend that you had, every day she made you feel sick. 
What are you going to do right now to make a difference tomorrow? Do you want tomorrow to be the same as it was yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before that? No? Then what are we going to do right now? Because something has to change. And it could be just by changing the way we communicate with people. Asking people, are you okay? Ask people, are you aware that you do this behavior? They may not even know. Are you aware that when you do that, you make me feel like this? Is that fair? Is that your intention? Is that what you really want to do? Is that the person that you really want to be? And most times they'll say no. So how do we change this behavior where we get into these blicks? We call out the behavior, as I said. Identify it. You say no more. Look yourself in the mirror and you say to yourself, I am the most important person to me. I am beautiful, loving, kind, generous, understanding, supportive, and most of all, loving. I am gorgeous, beautiful. I am worthy. I am valuable. I am treasured and adored. So what am I doing to create that? What am I doing within myself where it emits out of me like a pheromone and other people then see how valuable, treasured, adored, beautiful, giving, loving and gorgeous I truly am. That's how we give ourselves a pep talk. Don't rely on me to give you a pep talk. We can do it for ourselves. And all you need is a mirror because it comes down to the mirror effect. What we do ripples out and attaches to other people. Other people do something, tick, 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 and it comes to us like a wave of energy, and we get that same emotion. So if there's things in your life that you're not happy with, if there's things in your life right now that are making you feel ick, fatigued, tired, you might get headaches every day from the stress, work it out identify what it is that's causing that stress because that's the first step to eliminating it hope you still have a good day guys talk to you again soon bye to learn more about your solistic alignment please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.